Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about what makes a perfect tank. Um, to start off, we're going to talk about some core abilities that a tank must have. And the degree in which they, you know, have these traits can change. If you're a heroic raider, you obviously don't need to be a master of these. But, uh, you know, the higher you go, the better you need to be at these. This, these are your the, the foundation of a tank, I would say. Uh, the first trait is uh, knowing your defensive rotation, being able to plan your defensive rotation for every fight. And this will be completely different from fight to fight. Knowing when to use what cooldown, whether you should overlap cooldowns or use them one by one, or you know, having a good efficiency on these cooldowns. Um, obviously, it goes in hand in hand with you know not standing in bad stuff and hiding from abilities that you can, uh, as long as you don't lose too much uptime on the boss and things like that. The second one is communication skills. So communication skills are super, super important for a tank. There's a reason that a lot of the tanks used to be raid leaders or, you know, a lot of raiders are tanks. Um, even though they don't see the fight as a ranged DPS would, and in my opinion, a ranged DPS is the ideal raid leader. Um, even though you don't see it from that POV, you... A lot of tanks still used to be raid leaders, and there's a reason for that. Because it's in their nature of... of it's in their role, like in their role's nature to have good communication with the raid because you decide the flow of the fight. You decide the rhythm. You decide when bosses will stack and when they will spread and when the bosses will move out of line of sight, out of, you know, you know, like all sorts of stuff. You usually lead the group. Without you charging in, there's nobody going to follow you. Even if you're an M+, plus, you know, they can't pull the boss. You decide it. So knowing what you will do at what point and what you need the other raiders to do to you know, adjust to you is is super important. Only you can communicate that at at the highest level. The rate leader can't know what you're going to going to do within the next split second. Only you do. Uh, everything else, I would say, would be a reaction. And it's also a lot easier for you to communicate because you're the one deciding. So communication skills super important, especially between tanks, but also between healers and tanks, and also between DPS and tanks. If, you, if the DPS knows when you're going to stack up the mobs, they can, you know, you can say, okay, okay, two minutes already, I know, guys, but hold them. In 10 seconds, I'm going to stack up these mobs, right? Like, it's super, super important to be communicative with these things. Obviously, they can know these things for themselves, but still, like, because you're the one leading this, it's so much easier to communicate it. Next thing is consistency. Tanks need to do the same thing as much as they can, the same thing every single time for each scenario. This, like this is I would what what I call the rhythm of the fight. If you, if you feel that if you do the same things every time, it's so much easier to play the fight. And oftentimes the tank decides the rhythm because you're the one that is able to change the fight. And now of course you know other people can change it as well. Healers can you know stop healing and suddenly you have to use health stones. This is a completely different rhythm than when you easily survive the phase and you know you can focus on DPS. And when, if they change up using healing series at all like different times, then obviously it's gonna you know break your rhythm and you're gonna play bad on result. But the tank, like I mean, and I mean this is also important for other other roles, but for the tank it's I think even more important because they can very easily break this rhythm by taunting, you know, two seconds later or earlier or spreading a bit late or stacking a bit late or moving the boss a bit late or early, you know, like all these things. If you do it consistently, if you do everything consistently, if you take the same damage at the same time and do the same DPS and just, you know, all of these things you have an, you know, influence over, if you do, if you're consistent, it's going to make it a lot easier for tank, uh, for the raid. And even if you're bad at their defensive rotation, if you're consistently bad, your healers know about that and can can adjust. If you're consistently bad at communication skills, every time your tank dies, you forget about calling an external, your healers will know. Even though you don't call for an external, they will give it to you. And sometimes it will be a waste because you already planned for it. But a lot of the times, because you're consistently bad, it's actually going to be okay. So consistency is even good if you're badly consistent, if that makes sense. But as long as you don't change it up all the time, right? So um, those, I would say, are the three core abilities. And then we have some more underappreciated, a bit higher level abilities that a tank can have. Number one, very easy. Again, a lot of people know this is DPS. A tank's DPS is not very important in lower end guilds, but can be super, super important in higher end guilds. 
if you're like, and I'm, and I'm saying higher end, I'm still talking about like top 200 and stuff. The tank DPS is quite important. You can help your rate a lot. A lot of the tanks, for example, there's a there's a tendency that the tanks only will DPS the thing they're tanking. If they taunt at the boss, and the boss, like we're supposed to damage stop on the boss, they will still DPS because their brain is wired to just do their thing. They don't think about DPS. They can still stop and or or you know do their rotation on an off ad or or something else, but they usually won't. They will just do their thing. Or sometimes they will hide from abilities unnecessarily long because they don't care about their DPS. But even though they could just go back and DPS, you know, they will hide on Shriekwing too early. And I mean, of course, this doesn't matter. It's Shriekwing, right? But still. You can you can do a lot to improve your DPS. Maybe on the Sludgeist, you're standing too far after you've soaked, or on SLG, you I don't know uh, don't execute the thirty under thirty percent health ads, even though that you know a split second there can you know save the raid. So DPS quite important, but uh, you know not as important as DPS uh, role, but but still especially on higher level guilds, a lot of DPS will already play to their maximum. So if the tanks don't, it might not make that DPS check possible to, you know, to do. Next ability, class versatility. So when I'm saying class versatility, I mean being able to play different classes. Because the tank eye level does not matter as much as the eye level of a DPS, because, you know, I mean, it depends on the fight, of, of, of course, right? But a lot of the fights, you, there's a, there's a fight, let's say, that does magic damage. And it's much better to take a tank that is good at taking magic damage, you know, and uh, mitigating that, and losing some eye level in return, so it's basically an alt, than taking your main with higher eye level that brings nothing really and just takes a damn like it is. And maybe that alt also has additional utility like a mass grip, you know, that can change completely your strat and the flow of the fight and, you know, make, enable bosses to become killable when they wouldn't be otherwise. So, you know, maybe you need roars. Let's say on Kill Jaden, we needed a lot of roars, so we had double druid tanks. They were good regardless, but at the same time, you know, they were also good because of the roars. So, you know, a lot of fights like this, uh, you can you can swap to an alt tank if you think uh, the the damage intake is not gonna you know matter that much. Maybe there's also fights that don't really do a lot of boss damage. And sometimes you can play on an alt that an alt tank that will do more DPS on your main tank because the survivability doesn't matter that much. They will just go for that. So class versatility, a lot more important on tanks than on DPS because the eye level does not matter as much. This also goes for healers, by the way. But yeah, I'm not talking about that right now. Next topic is the play to kill mentality. So a lot of tanks, they tend to be just meat shields. And this goes a bit hand-in-hand in hand with DPS, but it's so much more as well. Um, obviously, doing more DPS is, is a part of this, you know, not being a meat shield. But you can do so much more as a tank. You can... I mean, I'll give you an example from last year, Artificer. We have five seats that we need to carry over. And, you know, the tank, he, he usually wouldn't care about this because they have this taunt mechanic going on at the same time. But if you're a good tank, you can also take one of these seats and take a DPS off this task, put it on yourself because it's easy for you. Because let's say, and in this case, ghosts don't fixate on tanks. So you reduce the RNG of you know things going wrong by putting it on the tank. And you see that your, your tank abilities don't overlap. So you're, you can take this task on you, maybe perhaps lose some mobility cooldowns in, in return, but knowing that you can do this, so basically putting yourself at a worse position to increase the rates effectiveness is a is a skill that you can do that, that you can use in a lot of fights in a lot of fights because tanks are op guys they can survive like almost anything so that enable and, and they also don't get targeted by a lot of things so they can you know do things that a dps can't and they can if the fight is easy for them because a lot of fights are easy for tanks and some are really hard for tanks so if the fight is easy on, for you, make like turning this into an advantage by taking more task on you, tasks on you is you know very very crucial. And again, you know, obviously this goes hand in hand with communication skills and and consistency. You know, if, if you know you're just not because a lot of people are focusing just on their defensive rotation. So this is like a collection of everything, but basically also adjusting to the fight and coming up with things that. Uh, that in like that make the fight easier 
outside of just tanking, you know, because as a tank, you can do more than just tanking. Um, and the last attribute to reach maximum, you know, uh, effectiveness with, you know, with the play to kill mentality is creativeness. Tanks have unique spells that other people can't, like they, they're in a unique position that other people can't do. And I think a lot of tanks use uh, lack creativeness. And it's also, I think it's also because there's only two tanks in a raid. Only those two people really know what's going on. Like, the DPS kind of knows what a tank does, but they feel the fight, only those two people. And if you think about it, there's, you know, let's say 12, uh, 14, 16 DPS, 14 DPS usually in a fight. And there's a lot more, you know, brainstorming action going on in between the pools. Whereas when it's just two tanks, there's usually only two people that are somewhat thinking. And uh, if those, you know, if one of those people are, you know, bad that's coming up with things, it will usually bore the other tank, and they will, you know, stop, you know, trying. Really, I've I've seen this happen quite a lot of times, where one tank is bad, and then the other tank is just because he's better than the other one, he will stop trying because there's not enough competition going on, and this stops the creativeness, it stops the tryharding, and they just stand, uh, tend to just fall back to these core abilities: defensive rotation, consistency, communication skills, nothing else. But a tank can do so much more. And what, what what do I mean by that? I'm talking about things like using the ank totem to survive a certain mechanic. I'm talking about using combat reses to drop your stacks. Maybe, you know, remove an ad from the fight like we did on Kill Jaden until it got hotfixed. Or, uh, you know, removing some stacks that would remain forever. Or maybe canceling a boss cast because you died. He just doesn't do it. Uh, for example, on Kill... Uh, what is the boss called? The side of the Nathius, the knockback ability. Now it does not cancel, uh, but you know there, there are fights where it would, and uh, you know you can remove an ability completely like that from the fight. Um, taunting at like like taunt guys is an amazing ability, and it's not it's not just going for tanks, but uh, also other you know DPS. Uh, you know, especially die by the sword, die by the sword taunting is a super super big thing. Make sure to use that. Like tanks don't need, they don't tend to use that. I don't know why, guys. They are just literally dying. There's ads on them. They're literally dying, and they don't call for a die by the sword taunt. And what they can even do is, if there's many ads, they can, if there's a paladin in the raid, they can just call and a warrior. They can ask for a challenger shout, mass taunt with die by the sword, and then bop them. And this guy takes like literally all ads off the tank. This can be so OP in a lot of scenarios, but tanks just don't do it. I don't know why. It, it, it's such a big thing, um, especially when a tank dies, being able to react fast and quickly and, you know, communicate with your team. There's just so many things you can do. When when bosses are taunt DR immune, they can call for bops on themselves so to switch the aggro from that tank to another one without the use of a taunt. Just endless things almost you can do, like with creativeness of a tank. You can put yourself again in like very bad, weird situations and uh, give room to... give room for people to spread all of this stuff it's again part of play to kill mentality but it requires a lot a lot of creativeness even if you have that mentality if you lack the creativeness it will you know you will be capped to you know maybe doing a little bit more dps maybe yeah uh, co communicating a bit better well, how you're going to move and stuff to enable the kill a bit more but this creativeness is a big big skill and uh, lastly, of course, guys, if you want to be the perfect tank, uh, need to subscribe to the channel. Without that, you're not going to get all this info. You're going to lack and you're going to be always that two top uh, maybe rank 300, 400 uh, tank in between there in those ranks. If you want to reach max capacity, you have to subscribe. That's the last tip I have for you. If you liked the video, make sure to like. I hope you, I could help you guys. Uh, if you have more things that you think the perfect tank needs to have that I didn't mention, Feel free to mention it in the video. I might have forgotten things. I'm, maybe I don't know things or everything possible. So I'm waiting to see what people come up with. Thank you guys for watching the video and see you next time. Bye-bye.